I don't think so. Let's start the next doctrine, crucifixion. I said, you, do you know what the Quran says? Anybody? What does the Quran say about the crucifixion? If I said the Quran talks about the crucifixion, I said, yes, the Quran talks about it. Let me tell you what it says. So you're not confused. Chapter 4, open chapter 4. True Surah Al Nisa. Chapter 4, verse. Here we go. 1 to 7, it says, They said and burst, We killed Jesus Christ, son of Mary, the messenger of Allah. But they killed him not, nor did they crucify him. But he was made to appear to them as so. So, I ask the pastor, do you believe in the crucifixion? I say, yes. Well, I'll say, I agree. The pastor like this, I thought you just told me you don't believe in it. I thought you just told me that. I said, yes, I just told you that. Correct. Then what do you mean? I said, look, I agree in the crucifixion. How? Because my crucifixion, your crucifixion is different. Your spelling is different. Look, you have crucifixion. C R U X. X. I F I C I T I M C R U F I X I O N. Remember that. That's the spelling. C R U F I X I O N. Crucy fiction. C R U C I F I X I O N. Now I'm saying C R U C I dash F I C T I O N. You get it? You believe in crucifixion. I believe in crucy fiction. That's what it is. We believe that this is a fiction, Pastor. Oh, I understand your point of view now. Good. But, I'm going to prove that to you in your own Bible. That this crucifixion is crucifixion. It's a fiction. How am I going to prove it? For what Jesus himself had to say. Wait, Jesus said something about it? I said, yes. It's very clear. Matthew... Chapter number 12, verse 38, 39, and 40. What does it say? It says, Then some scribes and Pharisees answered, saying, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. We want to see a sign from you. But he answered them and said, An evil and adulterous generation seek us for a sign. And there will be no sign like unto it, except for the sign of Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the whale, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. I say, look, I know you don't have time to read a page right now. Because I'm going to lecture but when you have a chance, open the book of Jonah and you see what happened to Jonah. But for those who know, let me ask you a question. When Jonah was thrown to the sea, was he dead or was he alive? Dead or alive? Alive. Good. He was alive. When the whale swallows him, was he dead or was he alive? Alive. Good. Alive. When the whale vomits him, was he dead or was he alive? Alive still. Alive. When he was praying in the bells really, before he got vomit, when he was praying, I hope you understand English, when he was praying in the bells whale's belly, was he de dead or was he alive? Alive. Alive. Obviously a dead man can't pray. Can a dead man pray? I think it would be foolish to even suggest that. Because how can a dead man pray? He can't even move. So what you have to see, he was alive, 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 and alive. For as John was three days and three nights alive, so shall the Son of Man be how? Alive. Alive. But the pastor will say, no, 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 no. 
he was not alive, he was dead. I said, do you know English? He said, yes, I know English. What does the word for as mean? And he stops right there. I said, the word for as is a comparison. The word for as is a what? A comparison. What are they comparing? He's the pastor said, a time factor. What's so miraculous about a time factor? The people are asking, we want to see a sign from thee. The French Bible says, miracle. Clearly, the sign is a miracle. They want to look for a miracle. So what's the miracle of a time factor? I'm going to vacation to where? The Caribbean for three days and three nights. And I come back. Any miracle? Any miracle? Actually, I had a good time. Believe me, I have a good time if I go to the Caribbean for three days and three nights. So what's the miracle? There's no miracle in the time factor. So Pastor, eradicate from your mind. The miracle it is when you expect the man to be dead and he was alive. When you expect him to be dead and he's alive. That's the miracle. But the pastor said, no, 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 no. I still believe it's a time factor. I said, okay, let me have it your way. What if it was a time factor? Did he fulfill it? He said, yes. I said, no. You say three days and three nights. But as John was in the bell wedding for three days and three nights. So should the son of man be three days and three nights? How? And you say, dead. Did he fulfill it? When he was on the cross, you say, good Friday. Right? When he resurrected, Sunday. Look, Friday night, he was in the sepulchre. The sepulchre is not the grave. Sepulchre. Saturday day, he was in the same sepulchre. Saturday night, in the sepulchre. Sunday morning when Mary Madeline goes to the tomb, the sepulchre, the thing was empty. So how is it? How many days, how many nights? Pastor, answer my question. How many days, how many nights? And he said, two nights and one day. I said, does that sound to you exactly like three days and three nights? He said, no. I said, not at all. Not at all. That sounds like half the time. Look, three days and three nights. Three plus three is six. Let's put it that way. Three plus three is six, right? Yeah. Good. Three plus three is six. Two, two nights in one day. Two plus one is three. Three and six. Three is half of six, right? Mm -hmm. So half the time, Jesus was there. So how can it be fulfilled? If half, only half the time he was there, it didn't fulfill three days and three nights. So I said, Pastor, it can never be a time factor now. And he has to admit. So point number one, he was a crucified. I'm going to give him another proof now. Luke, chapter 17, verse 24. No, actually Luke 24, verse 36. Not Luke 17. Luke 24, verse 36. Open that. Here it goes. You got some time to digest information. Good. Give you enough time. Now, Luke 24, verse 36 says, after the alleged crucifixion, after three days and three nights, he goes to the upper room, and I believe ten of his disciples are there, and he comes and with a greeting. An Islamic greeting. Wait, Islamic greeting? Yes, Islamic greeting. Look. He tells them, Shalom Aleikum. That's in Hebrew. It's Aslam Aleikum, which means peace be unto you. That's what it says, translated here. When he says peace be unto you, the disciples were terrified and frightened and supposed that they had seen a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do you doubts arise in your hearts? Behold, my hands 
and my feet, that I, I myself, have me and see. For a spirit, a spirit, has no flesh and bone as you see me have. Can a spirit have flesh and bones? He's giving you evidence that he's not a spirit. When he said this, he showed them his hand and feet. But while they still did not believe for joy and marvel, he said to them, have you any food here? So they gave him a piece of boiled fish, and he took and honeycomb. King James Version has honeycomb. Other books don't have honeycomb sometimes. Sometimes. So they gave him a boiled fish and honeycomb. And he took it and he asked. He asked to prove what? That he's a spirit? No. To prove that he's not a spirit. So what's so big about the spirit in that? The big thing is, according to, since you believe in power, let me quote to you Paul for once, Pastor. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 35 and onwards gives you clear proof. Anytime when something dies, it becomes spiritualized. Who said this? Paul. Because you believe in Paul, so I'm calling you Paul. Because Paul was you believe in the crucifixion, where Jesus never ever died by the crucifixion. He never said, believe, I died on the cross for your sins. Because he did not die on the cross. That's we what we, the Muslims, believe. It's clear. So, Bodies, when they die, they become spiritualized. Jesus' body did not become spiritualized. So what is that? It means he's alive. I think that's clear English. I don't know how much more I have to bring it in. Now, we go with a third proof for you to believe that this crucifixion didn't happen. Open John chapter 19. Verse 34. Actually, let's go from verse 32. Third one. Third one. Therefore, because it was the preparation day that the body should not remain on the cross on the Sabbath. They cannot have bodies on cross on Sabbath. So he wanted to hurry up the crucifixion, though they took them down. The Jews asked finally that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. Then the soldier came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus, and saw that he was already dead, there's no use of breaking his leg. They did not break his leg. But when one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, immediately blood and water gushed out. What does that mean, Pastor? When it says blood and water gushes out, that's a sign of circulation of blood. And when you mean a circulation of blood, that means that the person is alive. Pastor? Because if the person is dead, then the blood will be gushing out and water will be gushing out. So I'll give you third proof of how the man, Jesus, from Jesus Christ, could not have been crucified. So now, since I explained to you how he can be crucified, I answer the This is part three of the subject. I already explained how the crucifixion did not happen. It's really cruci dash fiction. That's what it is. It's a fiction. So I hope you have no dispute on that now, Pastor. This is now going to end up in the last part of the subject. I just said that the crucifixion, resurrection, and ascension are all in one subject. Because without a crucifixion, there's no purpose of resurrection and ascension. Really. But now, let's deal with the ascension for a second. In only two places of the Gospels of this Bible right here, only twice is the ascension mentioned in the Gospels. I'm not saying the book of Acts. The Gospels we're talking about. And it's mentioned twice. In the book of Mark, in the book of Luke, Luke chapter 24, verse 51, and Mark chapter number 16, verse number 19, where it says, and Jesus went up into heaven, and Jesus went up into heaven, are all thrown out as a fabrication, 
a concoction, and a fabrication, like I just said. Now, this Bible right here, in Mark chapter 16, who threw it out? Out of 32 Christian scholars in highest eminence, backed by 50 different cooperating denominations, said that this verse is a fabrication, and it's a fabrication they threw it out. The same one that threw out verse of John chapter 5, verse 7. The same one who threw out John chapter 3, verse 16. All out. They threw the same verse out. And they just threw out one verse. They threw out Mark chapter 16 from the end of 8 all the way to 20. That's about 12 verses right now. I said, I wonder why. You see, the King James goes to the ancient manuscripts. And you can check about that. The Revised Standard Version goes to the most ancient manuscripts. So which one would you want to take? Ancient or most ancient? The most ancient goes closer to Jesus. So why would you want to take the one that goes closer to Jesus? Talk to me. And you can see the truth. So in that same gospel where he took out almost 12 verses, inside those 12 verses, they threw out the verse of the ascension. And in Luke chapter 24, verse 51, they threw out again. Again. So, the purpose of the subject was to explain to you from the biblical side of how Christianity copied from Mithraism. Who is Mithra? This is the conclusion right here. Mithra was born of a virgin. Mithra was born of the 7th to the 5th. Mithra was born of a trinity. The son of God, born of a trinity, born of a virgin, crucified, resurrected, ascended, crucified after three days and three nights. I said, what was Jesus? The same exact thing that was proven all night? And I showed you how Mithra and Jesus is the same. Because why? Mithra was born of a virgin, Jesus was born of a virgin. Mithra was born of a trinity, Jesus was born of a virgin. Born of Trinity. Mithra was the crucified, Jesus was crucified. Mithra was resurrected, Jesus was resurrected. Mithra was ascended, and Jesus was ascended. Give you proofs that this is paganistic beliefs. But how they came into the Christianity? Tell me. Paul, popes, and Constantine. They all gave these births to Christianity because Christianity was Islam, but it's been changed by Shaitan in the form of Mithraism. That's what was telling you all night. And I was proving to you that Jesus denies all these concepts put together. So what we can see is since they're all the same. Christianity and Mithra is the same thing. And these religious leads to Babylon, which I did on other subjects, like if you check my subject on what is the origins of Christianity, isn't Christianity really Mithraism? And does our religion, does it lead to Islam? You get a bigger picture of what's going on. So please, for those who see the truth, add higher to the truth, have an open mind, and tell me what I'm telling you if it's the truth. If you don't see the truth in it, you can easily email me and give me proofs. Don't make gestures on me. What does the Quran say? It says in Surah 2, verse 18. Deaf, dumb, and blind, they will never return to the right path. Don't be those. Because the Bible will even tell you it's BF like that. Why should you? If the Bible don't even say to believe that, why should you believe in doing that? The Bible says, prove all things and hold fast to that which is good. Who says that? 1 to Legion chapter 5, verse 21. The Bible says in John chapter 8, verse 32, 
It says, forsake the truth, and the truth shall free who? you. So with those with an open mind and an open heart, who would seek the truth, and the truth shall free them. I don't know how any Christian can believe of such faith without proving it from their own book. And yet, if they can't prove it, why are they still following it? I mean, that's their choice. But I'm just asking the question now for them to look for the truth. And inshallah, with Allah's help, Allah will guide them to the truth. Because Allah says that truth shall prevail and a falsehood should do what? Diminish. Diminish. Truth shall prevail and falsehood should diminish. And I end my subject with a day with a salam alaikum, with a to life, with barakatu. May the peace and blessing God be upon all of you. Amantu billahi wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rusulihi wa liyawmi al-akhiri wa al-qadri khayrihi wa al-sharrihi min Allah wa al-ba'thi ba'd al-mawt la ilaha illa Allah Amantu billahi wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rusulihi Last of all, Muhammad, mercy to the world. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, la ilaha illallah. of perfect guidance the glorious Quran La ilaha illallah La ilaha illallah La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah La ilaha illallah La ilaha illallah La ilaha illallah
nations bearing every grief with thankfulness for all blessings we are content with destiny the will of Allah faith is belief in Allah and the messengers the angels and the final day and the holy scriptures to believe in destiny that good and bad both come from him and the resurrection there is no god but allah amen to billahi wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rusulihi wal yawmil akhiri wal qadri khayrihi wa sharrihi min allah wal ba'thi ba'd al maut la ilaha illa allah la ilaha illa allah